What's up everyone, Legal Concept here. So this isn't actually going to be a gameplay video. I was actually wondering like what build to play with my Krogan Engineer for Platinum and then I actually thought what's like an optimal way to build your human engineer or the Krogan Engineer or just the engineer classes. Well they're only those two, right? But yeah, those two. And then I was like thinking and it suddenly hit me, I was like, wait, I don't think well, I think the optimal build, well for me that is, and it might be not in your case, but I'd like to share my thought, thoughts. I think the optimal way is actually only to max one of your three skills. So, hear me out. So, um, for the Human Engineer, if you've seen me in my previous videos, I did two playstyles. I did my SSS, Specialist Support Sniper, and the Frozen Touch. And so I actually really enjoyed the Frozen Touch because I could actually still play a sniper risk, the specialist support sniper playstyle. And the so basically the specialist support sniper playstyle was maxing overload for the jumps. And what I did is you max the jumps for elemental tech and tech sever charge to debuff everything. And then when they're stunned, you have a sniper rifle and you pick off those easy headshots. Now what I did was with Overload, I actually have it maxed for recharge speed, which was nice. And then I obviously had Assault Turret maxed for, well not maxed, but put the points up for Omnilink. However, I missed out on the full capabilities of a Snap Freeze combo or an opportunity to proc Snap Freeze. Now in my Platinum gameplay, I didn't actually proc it, but having that ability there or having that chance to do that is still useful right so i actually decided to try this build in platinum my frozen touch variant now most people would actually max overload along with maxing cryobeam so they'll max overload for say maybe damage or recharge depending on what you go then you go anti shields and emp to just fully strip off shields now when i play the human engineer i actually found that having overload fully specced out to strip shields wasn't important and the reason is is they're stunned right and you're also using a fast firing weapon with cryo ammo because cryo ammo procs snap freeze without having to use snap freeze right so using a fast firing weapon with an ammo primer and that means you're going to do a lot of damage with elemental tech they're stunned which means their shields are going to be maybe like a quarter not a quarter or a third taken off and if they're stunned for like those couple of seconds, you're going to be strip killing them pretty fast anyways because they're stunned, right? They can't fire back. You, you're going to be spraying at them with like a hurricane or a rose rose, depending on what your weapon. But you want a fast firing weapon for that um, proc for the cryo ammo. And when their shields are fully gone, by the time, even if they recover, they're going to be frozen because you, you're going to prime them, right? So... You don't really need the fully shield stripping capabilities of a maxed overload. You just want that for the chain stun, which you can do at rank 1. It chains onto 3 at rank 1, right? Still st stuns and still does a decent amount of damage to shields. And then, so you don't really need rank 6 overload. Now, what you do is you actually put most of your points in Assault Turret and you go for Omnilink. So what Omnilink does is, this 35% recharge speed actually negates the recharge speed that you could have picked up if you maxed overload, right? So you got 25% here, but you got 35% here, which is greater. Not only that, but this actually affects your cryobeam as well, if you choose to use it. So it's like recharge for both of your abilities, but better than the actual rank 4 recharge. Now, another added benefit of having an Assault Turret is because you're still picking up Advanced Construction, which obviously you give Tech Construct health, and this Assault Turret can tank a bit, a fair, or not as much as if you had Durability, but it can still tank a fair bit, like, it can still draw aggro from dogs and draw some flat cannon shots, and it can still keep, give you, like, those couple of seconds of, sorry, excuse me, those couple of seconds of non-aggro time so you say so it's still pretty helpful and especially with this 200 percent recharge the recharge on this is 10 seconds it i've tested it and if you throw it right at the end of the wave destroy it it will come back up as the wave starts like in between waves 
so that you'll pretty much guaranteed have it as long as you remember to throw it. So that's the only downside, you need to throw it. If you're like evading, you're constantly evading and you want to do damage, you may not be as strong than say if you've maxed overload. So that's one downside, but you still got a lot of options. So for my SSS or special support sniper, I maxed overload and had assault turret, but I gave up my full capabilities of cryobeam. Now with this build, I can have the best of both worlds. I still got overload with a fairly good recharge speed thanks to Omnilink. I still got the capabilities of snap freeze and everything's enhanced, especially because I got elemental tech and I got tech sabotage, especially with the jumps from even rank one overload, but it, obviously it's rank three because you still get a bit of recharge speed here. So yeah, this is like a kind of midway, which sacrifices a little bit to have the best of both worlds of my builds. Now most cry beam or snap freeze builds was actually matched over. Sorry, if I stumbled a bit there. Most Cryobeam Snap Freeze builds was actually max overload, and they have no points in Assault Throne. So you don't actually get that super nice recharge speed, which obviously affects Cryobeam as well, but you obviously have a bit more damage on overload, but it doesn't really matter because they're stunned, and they're going to take so much damage from Cryo Ammo, especially Elemental debuff, because it actually affects Elemental Ammo. If you don't know if it affects, um, you can check the compilation below, and actually search it up yourself if you don't believe me. So yeah, now for the Krogan Engineer, which is the reason why I was thinking this, my usual build was actually just Max Overload and Max Incinerate. However, when I think about this, wouldn't it be better to just take those three, the uh, Rank 4, Rank 5, and Rank 6 points out, put them in the Salt Turret, and the reason is, is it gives me another body to work with. I still get a lot of recharge because this recharge 25% here is given back in the form of 35% chance and especially with the buff to assault turret from the only link range increasing from 6 meters to 10 meters it's very very generous with that range so as long as you're not like halfway across the map away from your assault turret gives you you got a bit of durability from 50% here and also oh or none for the Krogan engine but you're the Krogan engine obviously is a lot more healthy, 972 shield health over, was it 710? So yeah, you still got a lot of health, gives you another body to work with, a very short cooldown body thanks to recharge speed, and Omnilink obviously affects incinerate and overload, so your incinerate, which you don't have a lot of recharge speed because you don't have recharge at rank 4 like your overload does, you're picking that up in the form of Omnilink. So yeah, I think the most optimal way to actually have the best of both playstyles for me and the best ways to actually use your engineer is actually to get rank 5 of your assault turret. You just got to remember to keep using it. Obviously, if you're moving around, you may have a bit of a less opportunity to use it, but you should, it's still one of those things that I've tried and it has actually found it's quite useful. Overload still performs its duty. While I do have one less jump, I st I'm still applying elemental tech with the Krogan engineer and obviously tech sabotage with the human engineer to three targets so that's still very useful now with my Krogan engineer I do use disruptor ammo so disruptor ammo with my revenant still sh melts shields very fast and then incinerate for detonator so yeah I'm thinking that Omnilink is maybe at rank 5 like maybe a very optimal or for me the having the best of both worlds or best of both playstyles and you're sacrificing very little just damage and a bit of jump ability for an overload but yeah that's really all I was thinking it's just my thoughts and I thought I'd share it with you guys just if you guys were having trouble or thinking on how to build your engineers whether it's a human engineer or the Krogan engineer to till or oh, well, long story short assault turret to rank 5 for all the engineers and having overload at rank 3 and specking your well, not dump skill, but the uh, special skill. Well, uh, incinerate isn't a special skill, but like your other third skill. So for human engineer, it's crybeam. For Krogan engineer, it's incinerate up to rank six. And yeah, I think that's really the kind of best optimal way to build your engineer as of right now. Now, obviously, I could end the video here, but I am actually going to change it and just well respect my engineer after I had these thoughts so I was like thinking what kind of build should I play with the Krogan engineer and it just hit me 
I'm giving up so little if I um, actually get rank 12 or assault turret. I still get the jumps, I still get the stun, and I'm still doing a lot of damage because the stun obviously applies elemental tech, and I'm obviously still going to use an uh, elemental ammo. So it's very, very strong because it also gives more recharge. So yeah, I'm just reiterating points. Anyways, that's it for this video. I just wanted to give these thoughts and maybe help you if you hit a wall when building an engineer. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. See ya!